You ever look at a photo and think, damn, why is Karen in this? If only I could defake her out for a venerable leader. Someone who truly bears the weight of the world on their shoulders. A multi-talented revolutionary. I think you know who I'm talking about here. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. But what if you could actually leverage the power to do exactly that, deepfake? Well, in this video, we're gonna take a look at exactly how to do that using SimSwap and Python. Let's do it. So in this video, we're gonna be doing a bunch of stuff, but it's primarily gonna be focused around sim swap. So we're gonna be able to swap our face onto another video, or swap somebody else's face onto another video, but make sure you only use this for good purposes and not for evil, guys. I'm watching you, I'm watching you. So first up, what we're gonna do is get this up and running. We're gonna install all of the dependencies. We're then going to download the pre-trained models from GitHub. The link will be on the screen right about now. And then last but not least, we're actually gonna test it out. So we're gonna take a look at how we can face swap an image onto another image. We'll also take a look at how we can do that with video as well. Let's get right into it. Now, as per usual, we're gonna have a chat to our imaginary client to give them a little bit of background in a laid back way. Let's go and have a chat. So, Nick, can you do deep fakes? Uh, yeah, but before we do, we need to have a little chat. Oh man. If I show you how to do this, you gotta promise not to be evil. Seriously guys, don't be evil. Yeah, okay. Alrighty, we can do face swapping on images and video using a model called SimSwap. Cool, how does it work? Well, it uses a GAN architecture. So think of it as having two competing neural networks. The generator tries to apply the identity of a person onto a target image. So it's really trying to extract the key features of the person's face. Think their eyes, their nose, their mouth, their cheeks, all of the unique identity features. It's going to be trying to apply those to a target image. Hmm, interesting. But why does it work so well? Well, for two reasons. One is the identity injection module that's used in the generator. The second part is due to the discriminator that's used as part of the GAN training process. Think of this like a toll booth, right? It tries to pick out which images look real. SimSwap uses the discriminator and compares it against the real target image using something called weak feature matching loss. By optimizing for that loss, it learns to create good face swaps. Nice, well, you are gonna do it or what? Does a bear crap in the woods? Uh, what? Yes, let's do it. Welcome to the breakdown board. Decided to go a little French today. Alrighty, so we're gonna be taking a look at sim swap in this video. So let's do a quick high level overview as to how sim swap actually works. Now again, we're gonna keep this pretty high level. We're not gonna to go too deep into the research paper, but I wanted to give you a little bit of background as to the mechanics of how a model like this works. So first up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with a source and a target image. So our source image is gonna be the image that we wanna extract all the features from. Let's say we've got a dude with an angry face and some curly hair, right? He's got a little bit of a toupee. Then we're gonna have our target image and let's give our target image some spiky hair and we're gonna give him broad shoulders, right? Now what is actually gonna happen is we are going to pass those two images, so our source and our target, through our encoder and our decoder architecture. And what is gonna happen is we're gonna take the identity. So these are the specific facial features from our source image and we're going to swap them onto our target image. So our resulting output is going to be our target image. Let's just draw this out a little bit more straightforward. So again, we're gonna have broad shoulders because that is our target image. And we're gonna have spiky hair because that's our target image. But 
Keep in mind that our source features are going to then be applied. So I'm gonna draw them in pink so you can see what I'm trying to demonstrate here. So we'll have the angry eyes and the frown. So we're effectively transferring that person's identity onto that target image. Now this is done using the encoder decoder architecture, which is a bigger part of the GAN. Now out of this, what they've actually specifically done is they've created this ID injection module, which is what helps this perform so well. Now in terms of fine tuning this, we actually pass through the target and our final resulting image into a discriminator. So it's pretty similar to how you've seen other GANs work in the past. So our result plus our target image will then be passed through a discriminator. This is how I'm drawing my discriminator. Bum, bum, bum. And what we're gonna get out is whether or not these are real predictions or real, close to real images. Now, what we're actually doing here, or what is unique for the SimSwap model is that it actually uses something called weak feature matching loss. So what is actually happening in the background is we are extracting the unique encoding values or embedding values from specific layers prior to the end of the neural network to calculate weak FM loss. So this helps us preserve some of the features earlier on the, in the neural network to determine whether or not we're still preserving the source or the target images values. And that in a nutshell is how SimSwap works. Let's actually go and give it a crack. Alrighty, let's kick this thing off. So uh, deep faking using SimSwap. So that's exactly what we're gonna be doing in this video. Now, in terms of what we need to be focusing on, there's a couple of things that we need to do. So first up, we're gonna need to clone down the repo from GitHub. And this is available at github.com forward slash neural chain forward slash SimSwap. And there is a ton of amazing information about this model. So if you wanna kick this thing off and try it out yourself or read a lot more into it by all means, definitely do go and check this out. Now, this is actually powered by PyTorch and there's a great research paper which I skimmed over before actually taking a look at this uh, to give you a bit of a breakdown in the breakdown board. So definitely go delve into this if you do want some more information. But again, please don't apply this to illegal and unethical scenarios because you want to be a good person and do good things with good code. Cool. All right, so we're going to be focused on this and there's some examples of what is possible here, but I've actually converted this into a Jupyter Notebook as well. So you can test this out. Um, some great examples there. Now, first thing that we need to do is go on ahead and clone down this GitHub repo. So we are going to run this first command and this Jupyter Notebook will be available inside of a link in the description below. But you can also just take these commands, the, anything that starts with an exclamation mark, you can just take these commands and run them at a command prompt as well. So if you want to do this um, just using a standard command prompt, you could definitely do that. Okay, enough of me talking. Let's clone this down. So I'm going to run that command. That is going to start cloning down this sim swap folder here. So you can see there's nothing in there yet. Once that is done, we will then be able to start installing our dependency. So let's give that a moment and then we'll jump back over and start installing stuff. A little longer than a few minutes later. Cool, so that is now done. So if you actually go into the SimSwap folder, you can see we've got everything here that you would have seen inside of the GitHub repo. Now in terms of actually testing this out a little bit later on, we'll actually be able to dump images into this particular folder here. So crop 224 and we'll get outputs output into either output or I think there's another folder that it will output it based on the commands, but you can tweak all of this. Okay, cool. So the first command that was run is exclamation mark git clone https colon forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash neural chain forward slash sim swap. But really it's just cloning down this repository here. The next two commands are a little bit more important. So these are installing the dependencies that we need in order to allow this to run inside of our Python environment using Jupyter or using Python in general. So the first command is installing PyTorch. So the full command is exclamation mark pip install torch. And then we're just specifying specific versions of PyTorch, Torch Vision, Torch Audio, and we're saying where we actually want to download it from. Now, the place that I've got this from is just PyTorch. So if we go to pytorch.org, you can actually just hit install over here. And there's a whole bunch of settings that you can actually pass through depending on what type of machine you're running on. So let's say, for example, you're running on a Mac, then you might want to choose the stable version, hit Mac, 
And then let's say you want to install with pip, just hit pip. And in this case, there's no CUDA acceleration, so you'd hit CPU. So that would be how you go about installing PyTorch on a Mac without GPU acceleration. I'm running on a Windows machine, so we can hit stable, Windows, pip. I'm using pip in this case, Python, and I've got CUDA 11 dot something on my machine because I've got an NVIDIA GPU sitting down there. We can just copy this command, and that is exactly what I've done over here. So I've copied that command, placed it here, and exclamation mark pip install is going to go on ahead and install that. So we can run that command. And if you've never used a Jupyter Notebook before, you just put your cursor in the cell, hit shift and enter, and that's going to run that particular cell. In this case, doesn't look like we've got any errors there, so that is all downloaded. Now, the next command is actually based on what the SimSwap module actually recommends. So if you actually go into this preparation link, again, I'll link to this in the description below, but it actually recommends you install Insight Face ONNX Runtime or ONNX Runtime GPU, if you've got a GPU, and MoviePy. Now, I had to tweak this a little bit to ensure that I got it running on my GPU. So I've got exclamation mark pip install Insight face equals equals 0.2.1, which is exactly the same as what's quoted over here. I've swapped out the ONNX runtime. So ONNX is a serialization library for deep learning models. That's a fancy way of saying it's a way that you can use deep learning models in a lot of different places. So this helps you do exactly that. So we're going to use ONNX runtime dash GPU and I've set it to version 1.9.0. So this, I think the latest version had a couple of bugs when I tested it out. So 1.9.0 tended to work. And then we've also got MoviePy, which is again, exactly what was quoted over here in the documentation. Okay, so if we go and run that. Coolio. So that looks like it's all installed successfully. No issues there. So it's obviously gone really fast because I've got a lot of these pre-installed. If you are installing from scratch, it might take a little bit longer. Just want to show the commands that are or the libraries that I've actually got in here. So um, if you find this useful of me exporting these dependencies, let me know because I can actually just export these to a requirements.txt file if you want to take a look. So again, we've got ONNX runtime 1.9.0. We've got, what else did we install? MoviePy. Let's just double check that one. MoviePy. Yep, that's there. And we've got Torch down here. I saw all of those. And again, this is the CUDA 11.3 version. Alrighty, so that looks all good. So the next thing that we need to do, so that's step two now done, step one now done. We are now up to step three. This is where I had a little bit of trouble when I was getting this set up, just ensuring that I had stuff stored in the correct place. So I've actually included the instructions for specifically where I've put stuff so that you can copy this as well. But in terms of where I got this from, it is all from the GitHub repository. So there are a couple of things that you need to do. So first up, you need to clone down the face detection and alignment methods from Insight Face. So if you actually go to that link over there, uh, that you're going to be able to get the models that you need. Now, this link over here, you can see right down the bottom, it says OneDrive.Live. Oh, if I actually go to that link, it's actually going to take you to this OneDrive link and we'll be able to download this antelope.zip file. So we, let's take a look. Is that the first one? Yep. So that's the first one. So we can download that. And then the next link that we actually are going to need, and again, I've included all of these steps here, right? So rather than actually going direct to the GitHub repo, if you wanted to, you could just grab this link. It's going to take you to the same place. All right, so antelope.zip there. The next link that you're going to need is this one here, which is going to be downloading. Let's take a look at what this is actually downloading. The face passing from PyTorch, so we can grab that. So I'm going to grab that link. Let's reformat this because this looks like a nightmare to explain. This is just me reformatting to make it a little bit easier for you guys to understand 3.3 and we will make this. That's a note. That's a note. All right, cool. So we've got three things that we need to do here. So first up, we need to download that insight face model, which is what that antelope file is. The second thing that we need to download is that face passing module, which is this comment here from the GitHub repo. So we can actually just go to that link. And we should be able to download this. This one I think is pretty big. So we can go on ahead and download. So it should be 799999 underscore ida.path. So we can download that. 
and then we need to copy the ArcFace module as well. So let's go on ahead and download that. So there's three downloads. So the first one is going to be called antelope.zip. The second one is going to be 7999999. underscore ida dot path. And then the third one are going to be these two uh, repositories here. So it's going to be the checkpoints.zip. So we can download those from Google Drive. And then the arcface checkpoint.tar. Cool. So these are all of our downloads, right? So once you've downloaded all of these, you should have them all inside of a repository. Now, I've obviously gone and pre-downloaded all of these. So I can sort of show you. So let me go into that. So these are going to be all the downloads that you need. So 7999999. Let me zoom in so you can see this a bit better. All right. So you should have four files. So seven four nines underscore ida dot path. You've got that antelope file arcface underscore checkpoint and then checkpoints okay now this is the fun bit actually working out where to put each of these so let's bring this over here and then we will bring this over here okay so once those have all downloaded you've got to put them in the right folders this is so so critical otherwise you're going to run into a bunch of errors Okay, so let's quickly take a look at our instructions. So first thing that we're going to deal with is this antelope file over here. So what I've said is put this into dot forward slash insight face function forward slash models. And this is all inside of the GitHub repository. So if we zoom in, so you can see we've got SimSwap. If we go into SimSwap, it's saying, oh, my notes say insight face function. So in here, and then it needs to be inside of a folder called models. So we're going to create a new folder inside of here called models. Right. So inside of the GitHub repo, inside of insight face function, inside of models, that's where we want to unpack the antelope file. So let's go and grab the antelope file. So I've obviously downloaded it so we can copy that. And we're going to go back into our models folder, paste that in there. And we are going to extract it here. Now, you need to keep the antelope folder, right? So inside of antelope, you should have these two O and an X files. So let me zoom in there. So inside of SimSwap, how do I get this to center? Inside of SimSwap, inside of insight face function, inside of models, inside of antelope, you should have two O and an X files. That is the correct placement for those two. Okay, so that is this first bit now done. So let's double check. So 3.1, we need to put in the O and X files inside of models and then forward slash antelope. So let's actually just tweak this. So this should be inside of antelope. Cool. Alrighty then, so that's the first bit now done. We're now up to 3.2. So 3.2, we need to put in the checkpoint PTH files should be inside of the checkpoint folder. So let's double check which file this is. I believe this is the 7999. Yep, it is. Cool. So we are going to go back into our SIM swap folder. So inside of the passing model, and we need to create a new folder called checkpoint. So if you go into the main GitHub repo, so inside of SIM swap, inside a passing model, inside a checkpoint, this is where that 7999 file needs to go. Really important. So let's go back and grab that. Downloads, I'm just going to grab that file. We're going to paste it in there. Okay, so that is step 3.2 now done. So if we go into the GitHub repo, inside a passing underscore model, inside a checkpoint, we've got that PTH file in there, right? Let me show you that file path. So inside a sim swap, inside a passing model, inside a checkpoint. So we remember we created that folder. We're pasting that 79999 underscore file. Okay, that is that done. I know there's, there's only two more left to go, guys. It is a little bit of a pain to get it set up. But once it's done, it's done, okay? All right, so the next one, we need to copy the arcface underscore checkpoint dot tar into arcface model. So let's go into that. So right now we don't have an arcface model folder inside of our main repo. So we are going to create one. So it's going to be called arcface underscore model. So you can see that that is that there. So I've just gone and created a new folder inside of the GitHub repo called arcface underscore model. And we are going to copy the arcface checkpoint dot tar into that. So if we go into here, go into downloads, arcface checkpoint dot tar, we're going to copy that. You don't need to unzip this one. So paste that in there. Cool. All right. So if we go and take a look, 
So inside of our GitHub repository, inside of ArcFace underscore model, we've got ArcFace underscore checkpoint. Cool. One more thing. Okay. So the last thing that we need to do is unzip checkpoints.zip and place it inside of the root directory. So checkpoints. Okay. So if we go into, let's go and grab it. So if we go and grab our downloads, we're going to grab checkpoints, copy that. And then if we go into SimSwap, paste that in there. And we can extract to checkpoints. And delete that. So we now have a file called checkpoints. And then inside of that, we've got a file called people. And then we've got a whole bunch of stuff. Cool. All right. That is looking good. So let's quickly recap on what we did. So the first thing that we did is we created a new file called or a new folder called models inside of the insight face or insight face function folder. So inside of that, we've placed our antelope uh, repositories or antelope models. Cool. Then if we go into 3.2, we went into passing model. We then went and unpacked those checkpoints or we created a folder called checkpoints and we put 799999 underscore in there. And then the last two things that we did were we created the, what did we do? We copied the ArcFace checkpoint into the ArcFace model. So we did that. And remember, we didn't untar that one. And then last thing that we did is we unpacked the checkpoints and placed those in there. So those steps are going to be in there. If they don't make sense, let me know in the comments below and I'll tidy them up. So they do make a little bit more sense. But um, you can sort of see, all right, so we've gone and done four things there. We've gone and moved around four different modules. But that is that now done. So we can actually test this out now. So I've got two commands in here. So that is step three now done. We can actually go and first up face swap some images. Now this command over here actually allows you to test out the images and you can actually swap in your own images, which will, is what we'll do in a second. But let me quickly walk you through this. So first up, because at the Jupyter Notebook is not that I'm currently running is not inside of this particular GitHub repo. So let me show you the structure. So this is the Jupyter Notebook that I'm working in right now. So sim swap tutorial, and this is the GitHub folder that we just cloned. So the first thing that we're doing is we're CDing into that. So we're going into this GitHub repository and then we're running some Python commands. Oh no, I've gone and minimized it. So we're then going and running some Python commands. So the command is Python test underscore one underscore image dot pi. And then we are specifying the model that we want to use. So in this case, it's called people. And then we're passing through the path to the ArcFace model, which in this case is going to be ArcFace underscore model forward slash arcface underscore checkpoint dot tar. So again, you don't need to change that. We've set it up so that it should work. And then we've got these two paths that we want to use here. So the first path is going to be what extracts the, or the, the identity that's going to be extracted. So let's say, for example, you wanted to put my face onto Lewis Hamilton's body because that, that just seems realistic. <laughs> this is where you'd actually go and do it here. So it'd be... So this would be the person's identity that you want to extract, and this would be your target. So here, we're actually saying that we want to go into this crop underscore 224 folder, which is from the GitHub repo, and we want to go and overlay image 2.jpg onto trump.jpg. And we are going to output it into the output folder. So if we go and run that, let me actually go and show you what this is going to do, because it might take a little while to run, just a, a thing to keep, keep in mind. So if we go into crop 224, it is going to take this image here. So image 2.jpg. So these are just the sample images that come with it. All right, so it's going to grab that image as the source image. And then the target image is going to be Trump. So this one down here. All right, so we've got Trump. This is our source. This is our target. So we're trying to overlay this person's face onto Trump's face. Cool, makes sense? Cool. Let's go and take a look. So these are just warnings. I don't think we've got any errors there. So that is looking okay. Okay, I don't think we've got any errors there. That th These are just warnings that I noticed were popping up. I'm guessing it's because of the PyTorch implementation and some of the changes, but that's perfectly fine. I think, we'll see. So now the output is going to go into this output folder over here. So output forward slash. So let's go and take a look. So sim swap and output. That is the result. I mean, look at that. It's not too bad, right? So it's gone and taken that person's face and it's gone and overlaid it onto Trump. 
And even though the angles are kind of changed, it's kind of interesting that that has gone and work. Pretty cool, right? Now let's actually try this with um, some other images. So if we go again into crop 224, let's do uh, Nicolas Cage onto, um, trying to think, onto LeBron James. All right, so we're going to go, let's grab the name. So it should be Cage. Let me uh, take a look. What is it? Cage.jpg is going to be our... Cage is going to be our source. So pick a path is our source. So this will be cage.jpg. And then the target will be LeBron. What's the name of the file? James. Call it James. And again, we're going to output it into this output folder. So if we go and run that, we should get our output. Where's our output? Over here. That's the result. I mean, <laughs> cage, what is it? Cage James? I mean, it's pretty interesting there. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's great. All right. But one that I really wanted to try. Me onto Lewis. Let's try this out. All right. Now, I'm actually going to show you how to prepare this from scratch, right? So let's say you had to just, or you wanted to grab some images and you wanted to test this out yourself. So... I haven't actually tested with image sizes that are bigger than 224 because I believe that it's configured to 224 initially. So this means that you're going to try to have to get some images which are going to be 224 pixels by 224 pixels. But it's perfectly fine. I'm going to show you how to edit in a pretty lightweight way using Canva or another editing tool. So I've got some images of myself that I've already gone and collected. So in this particular case, it's a photo of me. Look at that head there. A little bit too smiley. Yeah, looking a bit crazy. But what I've, in order to do this, I've just gone and grabbed an image of myself. Let's grab one that's kind of straight ish. Whoa, what are you doing, Nick? All right. All right. So that's my face there. So I'm just using a snipping tool. So I'm going to grab my head. Save it down. And then I'm going to jump on over to Canva or you could use whatever Im imaging or image editing tool that you want to use. Canva is pretty easy for, for lightweight stuff. And I'm going to make the size 224 by 224 pixels. 224 pixels. And then we can upload that image that we just captured. And ideally what you want to do is try to center the head or the, the source and the target, right? All right, so that's a little uh, too big. That's not too bad. Okay, and then we're going to add another page. Let's go and grab one of Lewis. Lewis Hamilton. There. No, this one. Why are, they, why are we getting weird backgrounds? Mm, trying to find one which doesn't have a crazy background. Uh, that one's got sunnies on. Let's try this one. Actually, let's try this one. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to save that. And then let's upload that image. We're just going to center him. Right, and then we can just download these two images. So download. And we'll download it as JPG. And again, keep them 224 by 224, right? Let's see this. All right, so then we can grab those two images. So I've, I've just downloaded them. Let's grab them. So you can see that I've got image one and image two. They will be of Lewis and myself. Going to put them in some place I can work with. And I'm going to extract them. All right, so image one is me, and this should be 224. Uh, let's check details. Yep, so 224 pixels. So we're just going to call this one Nick Canva. And then image two should be Lewis, my boy. So Lewis Canva. All right, so we're going to grab those two images. And we are going to go on ahead. What are we going to do? We're going to paste them into that crop 224 folder. So if we go into SimSwap, SimSwap, crop 224, paste them in there. All right, so we've now got me Canva and Lewis Canva. So ideally, 
we should try to transpose my face onto Lewis's body or my facial features onto Lewis's body. All right, let's go see this. All right, so we are going to change a few things. So we are going to say that my image is going to be pick a source, so Nick Canva, and Lewis is going to be our target. I hope he wins this weekend. He's going to do it. Lewis Canva. All right, so nickcanva.jpg and lewiscanva.jpg. So if we go and run this, ideally, let's see if we've got any errors. No search file, crop 224. Uh, maybe I've spelled this wrong. So we've got an error there. Let's just double check. So it's saying file not found, no such file or directory, crop 224, lewiscanva.jpg. So clearly I've gone and typed something wrong. Um, let's double check that. Ah, I've said lose e canva. Let's just change the name of the file. So it should be Lewis Canva. Try that again. See if we've got any errors. These are just warnings. Doesn't look like any errors. They're just warnings. Let's take a look. <laughs> oh my god, that is a bit of a shock. <laughs> but there you go. So it's gone and sim swapped my face onto it. Oh, that's um yeah. That's uh, that's quality content for you right there, guys. So uh, that's me as a Formula One driver. I mean, uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Should I be uh, racing for Mercedes Patronus next uh, next year? But that is uh, that is how to go on ahead and face swap images. It's a bit of a shocker, but. Um, yeah, there, there you go. Now, it doesn't just stop there, right? So you can definitely do more than just images. So let's say, for example, you wanted to do video. Yeah, let's do it. So what we can do is run this command, and this is going to allow you to do pretty much the same thing, but rather than just doing a face swap for an image, you can do a face swap for a video. So similar to what we did here, so all we really need to do is update a couple of key parameters. Let me just quickly recap the, the image uh, swap. So we're going into the sim swap GitHub repo. We are then testing one image and we are going, the, the two key things that you need to pay attention to are these two lines over here, these two parameters. So pick a path and specifying the source image, which is going to be a path and then specifying the target image, which is going to be B path. So again, you saw that I have uh, created Lewis, uh, Nicholas Hamilton in this particular case. So, uh, AMG Patronus, I'm coming for you next year. But that is sort of what's possible with this, right? So it's actually going and performing that face swap. Now, okay, so the next thing that we want to do is face swap some <laughs> videos. <laughs> okay, so we've gone and added exclamation mark CD, sim swap, and then can you see that as my head covering it? Um, and then we're running Python test underscore video underscore swap single dot pi. We are specifying the crop size. So again, we've got it by 224 because that's what we've gone and done. And then the two most important things, again, are going to be pick a path. So this is going to be our source image. So let's say, for example, we wanted to superimpose Lewis onto me. We could do that. But we've actually got an image of uh, Robert Downey Jr. inside of the demo file folder. But again, you can specify whatever path you want, right? So in this particular case, it's gone and been set up for a specific demo file folder. If you wanted to put it somewhere else or create your own custom folders, you could. And we're going to be outputting it into a folder called, again, still into the output folder, but we're going to call it multi underscore test underscore swap single. We could call this whatever we wanted. So um, we could say Iron Nick or Iron Man Nick. All right, and this is going to take... Um, so our source image, which is going to be whatever we put there and our test image, let's actually just go and set this up correctly. So we are going to go and create a new folder and I'm going to call this, um, video swap, right? And then inside of our video swap folder, let's go and grab an image. So we are going to grab the Iron Man image out of the, I think it's inside a demo file here. So there's an image of our boy Robert, so we can copy that. And I'm going to put it inside of this folder called video swap. And then I've actually gone and created a quick video of myself. This is me just moving my head around. So what we're going to try to do is superimpose Robert Downey Jr.'s face or features onto me right now. And this is me shaking my head around just to see what performance looks like, right? So I'm going to cut that or copy that. 
go back and we're going to paste it into here so we've got iron man which should be a jpg yep and then we've got a video of myself called nick dot mp4 let's just make that lowercase and it's going to say uppercase whatever all right and we've put that inside of a folder called video swap so we're going to go and update this and i'll show you how to get it to work so pick a path is now going to be video swap what am i doing i am over here so pick a path should be video swap and we're going to leave it as ironman.jpg ironman.jpg that's that over there and then the name of our file is going to be nick.mp4 so this is what it should look like right so pick a path is going to be the ironman jpeg file the video path is going to be the path to the video that we wanted to go and overlay so over here and then the output path is we're going to just output it back into the same folder so video swap and we're going to call it iron man nick let me just go back over there let's actually break this down over a couple of lines so you can see because i keep moving this around a bit too much all right so these are going to be all the parameters that we are going to run okay so we've got the crop size at 224 we've got the use mask flag set we've got the name of the people model is that the face insights model? Uh, do, 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 I can't remember which one that was. Let's go back quickly. Sim swap. Uh, where was that? Checkpoints. All right. So those are the checkpoints for this specific model. So that's where it's, that's going. Um, we've got the arc face model. And then, but these are the most important bits here. So these three lines. So pick a path is going to be the source image. So the person that you want to go and swap on or swap from and then the two path is going to be the video path over here so in this case it's going to be video swap nick.mp4 the output path again we're going to put it back into the same folder so video swap and we're going to create the new file and call it ironman nick.mp4 so i'm just going to put this all back into one line i wanted to break that out so you could see it and again all these commands are going to be available inside of the jupyter notebook on github so let's just make sure this makes sense yep that looks good cool and as this is happening so this temp path here is actually going to show you the results as they are being compiled so you'll actually be able to see it as it's running so if i go and run this all things holding equal we should be able to go into the temp file once that starts running Give that a second. Okay, so you saw that temp results folder just got created. So this is it running in real time. So it's actually starting to do the swap. Now, I don't want to double click on these because it's actually going to use it to compile it in a sec. So let's let that finish run and then we'll actually be able to check it out. All right, so that took a little bit of time to compose, but it looks like it's kind of done. Let's scroll on down. I'm just double checking now. Doesn't look like we've got any errors. This just looks like it's the progress, but you can see that all the temp results are stored inside of this temp results folder. Let's go into our video swap folder. Oh, it looks like it's being created. Are you ready for this, guys? <laughs> so if we go and open it up, oh, that is Tony on me. And you can see that there is a watermark that's safe, but take a look. It's actually not too bad. Giving me a bit of a goatee and a beard. <laughs> oh, that is so good. Let's take a look again. So this obviously does take a little bit of time to run, but this is it in its, uh, all its glory. This is Nick Stark. <laughs> One more time. Sorry, I'm just fascinating but you can see that it's actually done a reasonably good job even though i'm moving my face right kind of cool and i specifically like opened my mouth and moved my head on purpose just to see what it would look like it's even given me some wrinkles am i looking like that and <laughs> can't get unconscious but i do like that it's given this watermark right so if i um how do i hide myself 
So at least it's give, placed that watermark there. So rather than just people being able to do dodgy stuff and uh, less legit images or less legit face swaps, it's um, giving a little bit of safety there. But pretty cool, right? So this took around about like five minutes to go and run on my GPU. So not too bad. The other one that I want to try is uh, The Rock. Because, I mean, we mentioned him in the intro so much. So I've got The Rock doing his signature eyebrow thing. I want to try to do this. Let's try this. So I want to copy that. And I want to use my face on the rock now. So it's a little bit of a change up in the paradigm. So if I go into sim swap, sim swap, I'm going to place this into the video swap folder. So the video is called the rock. I need an image of myself. So we're going to go into here. This is another headshot, me smiling. So I'm going to copy that one. Paste that in there. All right. So 224 headshot and the rock. So the rock is going to be our target video. So let's scroll on up. So where do we need to go? So we need to go to pick a path is going to be the image of myself. So 224 headshot. Headshot. And the video is called just rock. The rock. Let's remove the spaces. The rock. And it should be an MP4, right? Yep, so it is the rock, no spaces, dot, what is that, M4V? Is that not an MP4? Uh, hold on. Do we not have an MP4? I wonder if that's going to work. Let's try that out. It might not. M4V, I don't know, we'll see. The rock. M4V. All right, let's let that run and we'll be right back. If that doesn't run, then I'll try to convert that video to MP4 and then this looks like it's run way too fast. Yeah, no, that looks like it's thrown an error because it is not an appropriate file type. So um, Handbrake is something that I tend to use a lot to go and convert images. So let's actually go and drop that rock video and see if we can get this into MP4. So I want to output this into mp4 i'm just going to change our file name down the bottom starting code okay that looks like it's done so handbrake is just this really good open source tool to go and convert video so in this case i've taken that m4v video converted it to mp4 so let's see all right so that's mp4 let's double check all right let's grab this and try that So it's now called The Rock One. The Rock Dash One, and it is now an MP4. Let's try that. Let's go into our temp results folder, see if that's running. No, oh, we're getting errors. All right, guys, I got it working. Are you ready to see this? <laughs> So uh, the core thing that I had to change was I had to get a bigger image of myself. So in this case, I got one that was bigger than, and I actually removed this crops underscore size 224 and use mask commands that seemed to get it to run. Um, that was the core difference that I actually noticed. Now, if we actually go into the video swap folder, so I ended up outputting to a file called Iron Nick. Oh, I should have changed that. So I didn't overwrite the old one. But um, if you actually go and take a look now, this is me overlaying on the rock. Well, that didn't actually pick me up. It just looked like a cartoon towards the end, but, but that's picked me there. I wonder if we get different results if we actually went and put back the crop size 224 and the use mask. So let's try that. So right back here, let's paste that in and run that again. I'm going to have to keep the Iron Nick video. That was, that was a cracker. So that looks like it's running. So I think that the, the only thing that I had to change in order to get this to run was pass through a bigger image to um, pick a part. So I've got this capture.png file. It didn't seem to be the file extensions that were throwing it out. I also got a high resolution video of the rocks so rather than having one that was really small. I got a much bigger one that seemed to perform a lot better. So let's let this run. Fingers crossed we get slightly better results by bumping up the crop size and adding use masks. 
my favorite is still the uh lewis what is it nicholas hamilton uh, result <laughs> All right, let's let this run and then I will show you the results as soon as that's done. But in the meantime, you can see that this is definitely running. If you don't get stuff coming, oh, that looks like it's done. I was going to show you the temp results file, but it looks like we're all good. So as the model is actually training or actually performing the scoring, it you'll see the results inside of the test underscore results folder. This doesn't look like it's doing the greatest job towards the end, but towards the start, I mean, that's me overlaying <laughs> oh god all right let's take a look so at the start and then it kind of drops out maybe because it's um it's maybe not the best angle but uh i still think iron nick was the best but that in a nutshell is how to test out sim swap so we went and did a ton of stuff we cloned down the repo we installed pytorch and the other dependencies placed the models where they needed to be and then we took a look at how we can face swap images and face swap videos I think the better resolution video that you've got, the better it's going to perform. So remember in the big video that I recorded at my desk seemed to perform pretty well. The smaller resolution rock, man, not so great. But in this particular case, you can try it out. Let me know how you go. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell. And let me know how you went with it. Do you get some good results? Do you get it up and running on your machine? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. Peace.